Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. China, with its long history and powerful stature, has preserved numerous historical structures that bear the weight of millennia. These buildings carry the rich history and vicissitudes of China, embodying its traditional culture and aesthetics, showcasing the strength and wisdom of ancient China. In 1912, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty, Puai, abdicated, and the forbidden city underwent changes. In the same year, the Republic of China was established. The vast palace area, originally extending from the Meridian Gate to the Shenwu Gate, was transformed into the Palace Museum, commonly known as the Forbidden City. The former West Sea, spanning from the Golden Rooster Jade Bridge, was divided, with the North Sea turned into a park for civilians, and the Central Sea and South Sea occupied by Yuan Shikai, the leader of the Beiyang Army for his presidential residence. Thus, the entire West Sea was split in two. The area that became the presidential palace in the Central and South Seas covered 1,500 acres, with 700 acres of water. It was one-third larger than the Forbidden City to the east. Undoubtedly, Zhongnanhai is the most mysterious place in China today. From a royal garden in the Ming and Qing dynasties to Yuan Shikai's presidential residence and later the office of central government agencies, Zhongnanhai has consistently been the center of political power through the ages. This place has witnessed the lives and stories of many notable figures. While it remains mysterious and elusive to ordinary people, historical records allow us to delve into its secrets. The term Hai in Zhongnanhai is an abbreviation of the Mongolian word Haizi, meaning water. Positioned to the south of the Forbidden City and west of Jingshan, it encompasses the Central Sea and South Sea, in addition to the North Sea, collectively known as the Three Seas. Due to its scenic beauty, ancient people were drawn to this location. The construction of Zhongnanhai dates back to the Liao and Jin dynasties. During the Liao dynasty, it was called Yaoyu, a place where emperors enjoyed mountains and waters. In the Jin dynasty, particularly in 1179, large-scale construction began, named Daiming Palace initially and later changed to Wanning Palace. Pavilions, towers, palaces, and gardens surrounded Qionghua Island. To enhance its beauty, builders even transported Taihu stones from distant Bianjing. In the Yuan dynasty, the imperial court continued the development, managing Qionghua Island and Wanshou Mountain. The landscape, with peaks, green waters, lush trees, and unique stones, was naturally picturesque. At that time, the Yuan dynasty built its capital city around Qionghua Island and the Hai, making it an official royal garden within the imperial city, carrying significant political importance. As architectural techniques matured, the Three Seas gradually took shape during the Ming and Qing dynasties, with significant renovations and expansions. In the early Ming dynasty, the government repaired the constructions from previous dynasties and later initiated more extensive construction projects. In the Qing dynasty, the construction of the Three Seas was essentially completed, with subsequent efforts focused on repair and supplementation. Older structures that had weathered many years were dismantled or reconstructed, and new buildings were added. For example, the building on the top of Qionghua Island was dismantled, replaced by the Lama Tower and a Buddhist temple. The mountain was renamed White Pagoda Mountain due to the presence of a white pagoda. After the Qing dynasty, there were no major changes. In the modern era, the Beiyang government demolished the outer walls of Baoyue Tower, renaming it Xinhua Men. Since then, Xinhua Men has become the main gate of Zhongnanhai. If we trace the history of Zhongnanhai from the Liao and Jin dynasties to the present day, it has undergone nearly a thousand years of transformation. It has experienced changes in dynasties, countless calamities, wars, foreign invasions, and finally the founding of the People's Republic of China. It is undoubtedly deserving of the description, long history. As for its grandeur, Zhongnanhai covers an area of about 1,500 acres, with about half of it being water, around 700 acres. 
Zhongnanhai boasts various scenic spots, including Ziguang Pavilion, Fengzi Garden, Jinggu, Shuiyun Pavilion, Jiaoyuan, Qingzheng Hall, Wanshan Hall, Shizheng Prince's Mansion, and Ingtai. Each one is grand and magnificent. For instance, to the north of Ingtai is Xiangwan Pavilion, a two-story structure with a total of 14 rooms on the left and right. The overall complex has 38 rooms. It is needless to say that Zhongnanhai possesses an intrinsic beauty due to its long history and cultural heritage. Simultaneously, its majestic and exquisite landscapes constitute its external beauty. These two aspects of beauty are rarely found together in other landscapes. Before the Yuan dynasty, regardless of size, construction in Zhongnanhai was primarily for leisure purposes. After the Yuan dynasty constructed the imperial city, it became a royal garden and acquired a political color. During the Qing dynasty, Zhongnanhai's political significance exceeded that of any previous era. Several emperors frequently visited the place, including Empress Dowager Cixi, who had a particular fondness for it. Emperors Kangxi and Qianlong often held banquets at Hanyuan Hall in Xiangwan Pavilion, entertaining civil and military officials. During the Wuxiu reform, Emperor Guangxiu often handled state affairs at Hanyuan Hall. Later, after the failure of the reform, Emperor Guangxiu was confined here by Empress Dowager Cixi and ultimately passed away in Zhongnanhai. Furthermore, during the Qing dynasty, as interactions with foreign countries increased, various diplomatic activities, such as meetings with foreign envoys and the acceptance of diplomatic documents, took place here. Additionally, many grand events were held here annually, such as the Ghost Festival on the 15th day of the 7th lunar month. On this night, palace maids joyously placed thousands of lotus-shaped lanterns on the water, creating a spectacular sight. In winter, when the lake froze, the eight banners garrisoned in the pool engaged in ice sports and practiced their skills. Sometimes, when Emperor Qianlong was in the mood, he would personally ride an ice bed to tour the lake. In Zihai, Emperors Kangxi and Qianlong infused the area with a military atmosphere, refurbishing it to become a place for reviewing guards and martial arts competitions. Two days before the Mid-Autumn Festival, they would assemble ministers and guards in front of Ziguang Pavilion for archery competitions. The emperor himself would also shoot arrows to display his royal might. Emperor Qianlong collected the drawings and captured weapons from various battles and displayed them in Ziguang Pavilion. Portraits of meritorious officials were also hung there. During the palace examination, when scholars skilled in martial arts advanced, the emperor would personally inspect their equestrian archery skills. In the early years of the Republic of China, Zhongnanhai remained the political center. Yuan Shikai, Li Yuanhong, and Chao Kun's presidential palaces, Zhang Zuolin's Grand Marshal's office, the State Council of the Beiyang Warlords, and the Regency Cabinet were all located here. After the Northern Expedition, Zhongnanhai was temporarily turned into a park for public visits. During the period of the Kuomintang, Yingqin's Beiping military branch and Li Zongren's Beiping headquarters were also set up in Zhongnanhai. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, Zhongnanhai became the location of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China and the State Council. Many important historic meetings were held here. Figures like Mao Zedong, Zhou Enlai, Lu Shaoqi, and Zhu De also lived here. Currently, it serves as the residence and office of President Xi Jinping. The evolution of Zhongnanhai spans nearly a thousand years, transforming from an entertainment venue to a crucial political site for military, political, and diplomatic activities. Over the years, builders adapted its construction to meet new functions, continuing to the present day. This land is not only renowned worldwide for being situated in the vast territory of China but also for its record-breaking history, immense acreage, well-preserved architectural structures, and beautiful scenery. Zhongnanhai boasts grand palaces as well as simple and elegant chambers, serious yet full of poetic charm.
it truly symbolizes the architectural treasures of the entire Chinese nation, witnessing the changes in history and serving as a symbol of Chinese civilization. This is History and Culture Channel, like, and, subscribe, are the biggest help and support for us, thank you everyone, see you next time.